Thank you for attending our presentation. Um, as we were introduced, uh, I'm Melody, this is Lisa. We usually, I think, just go by our first names. Um, the, the slide, uh, of course, they put up to begin turning point is if everyone would set their clickers. We do have some of the um, slides that are interactive today with some samples of what we do. So our channel is 62. If you need to program that, this would be a good time to go ahead and follow the instructions and program yourselves to take part in what we will be doing. <laughs> all right. Moving along, we'll see how this all works and holds together. Um, our overview of our presentation and the approach that we took with our paper is that um, we've actually done a talk like this before, Lisa and I both together. We did it for our own school of business um, and trying to get other faculty to participate and, and implement this software because two years ago, was it Lisa? That uh, the school business purchased a laptop and a system of Turning Point. We had 50 clickers in the original set, and the idea was then that they would be checked out through Lisa's office, um, and so you could go and say, I want to use Turning Point, and then you would go over that day and reserve it and check it out and take it to your classroom, whatever room you had, and set up the laptop and run the program. Um, in the past year, in the past six months actually, I wrote a grant and was able to get my own software system in my own classroom, and I have a dedicated classroom now for those of us who want to use this, and we're assigned to that room. We can use it on a daily basis. So it is changing the way we use the system. But initially, before I applied for the grant and had my own system, I was using the checkout laptop turning point system uh, and trying to get more faculty to use it because I thought if I could get more and more faculty to use it, we could actually get a couple of these systems installed in the classroom. So that was sort of where this uh, initial idea for this presentation is has come from in some of the work that we've done with collecting survey data from students and responses. So the approach to our presentation is for Lisa to talk about, from her standpoint, implementing the system, um, using technology as a technology support specialist for our school of business and the Lumpkin College of Applied Sciences. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about as a faculty using the system and how we've been using it. And then the third section will cover our survey from students and then uh, the limit, the drawbacks and benefits as I see it and Lisa sees it. As we all know, we all, uh, how, can I have a show of hands real quickly? I should, we should have a slide for clickers. But uh, how many people are actively in an instructional type of role where you're meeting with students on a fairly frequent basis? Okay. And the others of you, do you, would you be utilizing this system more for like meetings, committee work, breakout work, that type of thing? Because it could be scaled either way. But I think in, in the long run, in all of our activities, we want people to remember what we're proposing or what we're hoping they bring away from the classroom and whatnot. And ideally, it would be nice if we could get that whole funnel to the brain uh, system going and working really well, but in the past, rote memorization typically doesn't work. And so, click, ding. Oh, <laughs> and so, John Dewey, was, I would call him the father of project-based learning, he learned early on that people are going to retain information better, and this is not anything new. I'm sure you've probably heard it a hundred times already uh, through even just the conference uh, sessions the last couple of days, that pr when people are engaged in the activity of which they are interested in, they're going to have a higher retention rate. That long-term memory, that knowledge transfer happens in a lot more friendly environment. It's more student-centered. You're not going for high, you know, that top-down approach, it just never works. When you use that bottom-up approach with getting into where the student wants to be or the learner and you have them engaged in the process, they're using their critical thinking skills along the way saying, okay, this is important to me. How do I get to this, this next step or this next process? And, and so, in, and what do we also, again, found out and we have Cole and other people that talk about learning styles. You need multiple formats of materials so that your learners can come at it from different angles. My son's dyslexic, he's more of an auditory learner. He can memorize, the teacher can read a story, he can memorize it, but if you ask him to read it, it's very hard for him. And so, as with our learners that come into the classroom, they need more variety of formats of the content distributed to them so that they can engage in it and make it part of their own. But, click, what's prevented us in the past from utilizing some of these tools, one more time, to keep our brain active, in especially 
teaching and learning scenarios is the cost associated with some of these tools and technologies and then the support for these tools and technologies. And as Melody can probably attest to, not everything always goes as smoothly as scripted. So both pieces, cost and support, have been huge factors. And I've got, um, we've got resources available, but recent studies from 2004 on up through um, Brewer, Hatch, Jensen, Moore, Trotter, uh, Carnival, they all had been studying the idea of personal response systems in the classroom, knowledge retention, but then why, you know, what was that faculty adoption? What was uh, the biggest roadblock for them to implement it? And a lot of times it came down to cost and support. Faculty are busy. They don't need to be burdened with trying to troubleshoot all the technology back end of things. And Melody mentioned earlier, we had a system that could be checked out because on campus, we like our classrooms to be all uniform. And before this piece of software was accepted as a uniform piece that should be on our instructional units, there were several processes that had to happen. And it was just easier for me to check out a laptop that had the software on it. The faculty could literally build their presentations and have it ready to go, bring it into the classroom, be familiar with the tool. The receiver worked with the laptop. The clickers worked with the receiver. And we were all set up and ready to go. And so since then, again, cost has started to come down. The support, the people in administration now are valuing the fact that, yeah, these people shouldn't be technologists trying to take care of all the hardware. We need them to be the uh, encouragers, the content providers, the facilitators for the discussions, and to keep that classroom lively and active. And so that's where my role has come very important in the fact that we can then come, I can come with Melody, we can talk about best practices, and I said, hey, I've seen this. You might want to try that because we, we talk about what's important for her classroom to get that learning objective accomplished. So in the long run, the information is good for the resources that I've come with personal response systems. As the cost has come down, administrations realize the support still has to be there so that you're going to see the adoption of these types of systems becoming more fluid in higher education as well as K-12. So. How I've been using Turning Point. I teach mainly human resource management courses at the undergraduate level, juniors and seniors. Um, I also teach an MBA class uh, that is organizational behavior and group dynamics. And I will tell you that from a pedagogical standpoint, I don't use Turning Point at all with my master's students. The MBA students have plenty of activities going on in class. They're engaged. We do a lot of cases. We talk about it. It's a small class, usually about 12 students in that class. Um, I can't get them to shut up. So the idea of having active learning um, has not been an issue in that class. To do this type of review session or use of Turning Point, I really have not found a way to use Turning Point with those students. So I'm a big proponent of matching the right tools to the audience and how you can use them as a faculty member. And so I did want to point out, I, I'm not just, you know, Turning Point's a great thing and I'm going to integrate it everywhere I can. Um, I've been real deliberate, deliberate in how I've decided to use it thus far. So I use it, uh, the main class that I teach every semester, two sections, is Management 3450, which is the principles of HR. The class is um, a somewhat unique to our program in that it's a required course for all management majors. And it's also a required course for every business minor. So what I end up with is about a 50-50 split of students who are management majors, who are interested in being managers, who have a strong orientation towards this is a foundations class of other management courses they will take. The other half of the class are history majors, PE majors, um, terrified of the school of business, quite honestly. They've heard it's really mathematical and rigorous. And they come into my class oftentimes um, really, really nervous about the kind of material that I will cover in the class and whether or not they can keep up with the other students who have already had a business core curriculum, who are, everybody's a junior by the time they hit this class. And I also get a lot of seniors. It's about a 50-50 senior split. A lot of the minors actually are coming back as graduating seniors. Um, so that produces some good dynamics for actually using Turning Point in leveling the playing field. I like to use Turning Point primarily for exam reviews at this point. Um, today we'll be doing one, I'll be doing one in the class. We're having an exam on Thursday. So the kids are all excited. It's like, oh, it's clicker day. And yesterday I, they saw me in the hall. They were, clickers tomorrow. I said, yep. Um, we do get that level of enthusiasm that they look forward to it. And they get a chance to preview the questions, and they feel like it's more level than 
Um, I think some of the times when the minors get thrown in with the majors, they feel like they're being overwhelmed and that the other kids have such a big advantage over them. And so for me, that's an important part. Um, everybody gets the same preview and is getting the same information. So uh, that's the primary class I use this in is 3450. Between 28 and 45 students each semester, and I teach two sections.